Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Speedgrass Forge. Apparently I've got one person waiting, which is a good start. Type in the comments, say hello if you're here. Don't forget, you can you can always comment. I can't see the comments on my screen, which means I can uh, answer any comments, any questions live. So don't be afraid to ask me anything. Um, while I'm working, I will be going through some uh, some history of blacksmithing and stuff like that. I'll also explain what I'm doing um, because this is a working smithy. I'm the smith, and this is my smithy. It's called Speargrass Forge, okay, because that is a forge. So I'll go through a couple of bit, bits of equipment. Hi, Steph. Hi, Steph and the kids. How are you? So, to start off with, a couple of bits of equipment that I use on the daily as a blacksmith is, of course, a hammer. So this is my regular use hammer, okay? This is an anvil. So this is what I use to shape the metal on. And then we've got a forge. So a forge is what I use to heat the metal up. So uh, with blacksmithing, uh, we have to use fire to heat the, heat the metal up. And fire has three components. It's a science thing. It's got heat, fuel, and air. So in order to get something hot, I need heat, fuel, and air. So of course you think fire is already hot, but you need to light a fire with a spark or something hot. And then fuel is the charcoal that I use. And of course air, air is all around, but in order to get the fire hotter, I use the fuel and force air into it to make it hotter. So what I'll do now is I'll just show you a little bit of a uh, I'll show you a little bit of what happens when I turn this turn this blower, and you'll see the flames come up, and it'll actually get hotter. Okay. <laughs> So that's what happens when you add forced air into a fire. It, get, it burns, it, it causes the heat to increase and the, the fuel to burn faster, but it also causes it to burn hotter. Now, as you can see, this is glowing hot. This is absolutely red hot. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to cool this off and put it back in the fire so you can see how fast it actually heats up. So this is just my uh, quench tank here. So as you can see, it's nice and cool now. It's cold enough to touch. Now, if I had to touch that when it was red, uh, red, I would have got severe burns. Oh, we've got someone else here. Drop a comment, say hello. Um, if you have any questions, don't, don't hesitate to ask. We're just going through some of the uh, science of blacksmithing at the moment. Why is it called a quench tank? It's called a quench tank because it quenches. It, uh, it cools things off. So when you're cooling something off, like, or, or satiating something, it's called quenching. So when you have a burning thirst, for example, that's where the, the term quench your thirst comes from because you're cooling off your thirst. You're making it go away. So as you can see, this is nice and cold now. So I'm just going to stick on the side while I quickly work this piece of bar because, um, of course, I am a working smithy, so I do have to, I am, I'm actually making stuff at the moment. Show you what I'm doing. So this is the bar um, that I cooled off, and it was exactly the same as this one. But now I've got a point on this one. You can see. So this one's a bit rounded, and this one's got a point on it because I'm actually making some of these. Okay. So what this is is a pin to go into a hair thing. So this this goes in your hair, and this goes through to lock it in. So that's what I'm making at the moment. I'm making pins for them. All right, so as you can see, I'm going to cool these both off now. So I've got these ni both nice and cool, so I'm going to show you how quickly it heats up when you force air into the fire.
get it in the right spot in the fire would help. starting to melt it. See how it's sparkling? That means it's actually starting to melt, which is not a good thing. So the melting temperature of steel, um, as you just saw, it got up to melting point. The melting temperature of steel is actually 1,350-ish degrees Celsius. So enough to instantly incinerate most um, most anything. But yeah, that the, what I was actually doing because steel actually contains carbon. Okay, so uh, this piece of charcoal is pure carbon. Okay, so or near on pure carbon. So in the steel, the steel contains iron and carbon. That's what makes it steel. Now. Uh, what I was actually doing to this piece of steel was actually burning it. So what was happening was the carbon in the steel was actually burning, which was causing the iron to melt. Okay, so it gets very, it gets very, very hot. The um, melting temperature of pure iron is about fifteen hundred degrees Celsius, fifteen hundred and seventy, if I believe correctly. Um, whereas steel is a little bit lower because the carbon burns in it first. Very good questions there, Miley. So, absolutely, I know some fantastic ladies. We call them lady smiths, but of course they're just blacksmiths as well. Um, I know some fantastic blacksmith, lady blacksmiths all over the world. Um, there's actually one that I really, I actually talk to on a regular basis. She's based in America, um, and she's a school teacher as well. But so, um, so she's a she's a wonderful lady that I get along with really well. Her name's uh, Caitlin, but she and she also has a YouTube channel as well. It's called um, Ouroboros Armour. Good question there, Tilly. Yeah, there's nothing that stops ladies from doing this um, at all. There's, uh, there's a lot of very good lady smiths, even here in Australia. In the Western Australia, there's a lady that um, that makes knives, and, of course, that's part of blacksmithing as well. Uh, and she makes knives, and she's one of the best in the world, better than a lot of men. So, yes, um, women can do this, absolutely. So we'll start off with a little bit of history of blacksmithing. So blacksmithing started with steel or with, with iron uh, about 3,000 years ago. Now, what happened before that was they think that uh, the way in working with metal actually started was, um, you know how sometimes you build a fireplace and it's got rocks around it when you go camping? Well, they think that once upon a time, many, many thousands of years ago, Someone built a campfire, and around it they actually put a rock that contained copper. Now, copper has a lot lower melting temperature than, than iron or steel. It melts at around 700, 800 degrees Celsius, which a regular campfire can get up to moderately easily, or if there's a wind, it can get up to very easily. So what they think happened was the copper actually melted out of the, uh, or smelted out of the rock that contained it, um, and then people started using copper. Now, someone who works with copper is actually called a red smith because when copper, when copper mixes with air in a fire, uh, what happens is it turns red. So from there, of course, they, um, if that's the copper age. Then they moved into the uh, bronze age. So what bronze is, is actually an alloy. And what an alloy is, it's a mixture of metals. So bronze is a mixture of copper and tin. Now, not tin like you see in can, that tin cans. Tin is actually um, 
uh, a metal that is really soft and it used to be used in um, in roofing, but um, and used in drinking cups and stuff like that, but uh, not used anymore. Okay, but what they did was they mixed tin, which has or a little bit higher of a melting point, with copper while it was melted, and what that would do was we create a metal called bronze. And in the Bronze Age, um, you'd have what was called a bronze smith. And of course, of course, you know the, a lot of stuff was cast. Now, bronze isn't quite worked like um, metal, and neither is copper. Copper is actually worked opposite to the what I'm doing now. So with copper, you actually work it cold. And, in all, and it, as, as you work it, it gets hard. So what you've got to do is heat it up and quench it and cool it off in order to make it soft again so you can keep working. Otherwise, it ends up getting too hard and cracking. Same with bronze because bronze and tin, they, they make a stronger metal when they're together, um, even though they're weak when they're apart. So when you, join, when you mix those two metals, they get very, very strong, right? Particularly after work hardening, or like I said, when they work it, it gets harder. Right, and then they'd heat it up and quench it off in order to make it nice and soft again so they could work it and shape it a bit better. Most bronze stuff, though, was sm was uh, was smelted and then poured. So a lot of, in the history, you see a lot of bronze axes and bronze knives and all that type of thing. So they were actually cast. So what they'd do is they'd melt up the bronze and they'd pour it into a mould, just like you would do with uh, with cupcakes and stuff like that, and it would mould it into the shape of the, of the knife or the axe or the sword. And a lot of stuff was actually cast. And then what they'd do is once it was actually, once it was cast, they'd pull it out of the cast and then they'd, then they'd work on it with a hammer and an anvil in order to shape it um, a little bit more and make it tougher um, in order to hold an edge and all that type of thing. Then, yeah, well, yeah, so Blacksmith, uh, Blacksmith didn't make this one. This one was made by a, um, by a company. However, this hammer here, which is, the hammer I use for um, moving heavier steel. Um, I, I use it when I'm forging bigger stuff because it's a heavier hammer. Uh, this was actually made by a blacksmith. So this is what we call a cross peen hammer because as you can see, so this one's called a ball peen. I'll bring it up closer. So we've got the flat hammer face and on the back we've got a ball or, or a round shape. And, and what peening is, it's when you actually uh, bend stuff or move stuff in a certain direc direction. So this is a ball peen. Now this is called a cross peen because we've got the flat face of the hammer and then across here, this is the cross peen, okay? Now we also have a different type. There's also a lot of different types of hammer. We have a, a what's called a straight peen. So instead of the peen being this way, it comes up this way. So it actually looks like that, okay? So the, ham, the hammer handle would come out here. And so the hammer would, stick, the hammer would actually sit like this, right? And then we have a diagonal peen, which goes that way or that way. So there's a lot of different types of hammer the blacksmith is. I mainly use these two. I don't have any other hammers really at the moment. I have a smaller cross peen that I use. And then I have another hammer, which is also a cross peen, but it's a different style to this one. It's called a French cross peen. So there's a lot of different types of uh, hammer styles out there. But like I said, so blacksmith, a blacksmith didn't make this hammer. Once upon a time, they would have. And I'm actually planning eventually to make my own ball peen and cross peens. Um, but a blacksmith did make this one. Good, very good question there, Riley. Well done. So, yeah, so as I was saying, so, um, with, uh, so from the Bronze Age, we moved into what's called the Iron Age. So we're still kind of in the Iron Age now. That's a metal that we use. Um, Although it's argued that we're actually in the glass and industrial, we went through the glass age into the industrial age. But anyway, that's, that's I digress. No, no, it's still burning. All I've got to do is add a little bit of air. But I don't want the steel to melt. That's why I just let it burn down a little bit. So, <laughs> so with um, so with the Iron Age, the Iron Age started around three thousand BC, okay, or fifteen hundred, two thousand. 3,000, 2,000, more 1,500 BC. It's a bit of a crossover between the Bronze Age and the, the Iron Age because some areas started using bronze, uh, were started using iron when other areas were still using bronze. The reason why iron or, and steel became so popular because steel out, out, outperformed bronze, okay? So steel outperformed bronze, and so more people wanted to get into working steel. However... 
With working steel, it's a lot harder to work than bronze because you've got to heat it up and shape it from the start. Once You can only smelt it into um, to bars or ingots, and then you've got to work it from scratch all the way into the finish. So that's when blacksmiths became a bit popular. Smith actually exists because smiths historically were, were blacksmiths. So, for example, if you were going to... Uh, you needed something made like a knife, you'd go see John the Smith and then eventually became John Smith. Okay, so a little bit more work now with the hammer. There it is. I'll show you what I'm doing at the moment. So what I'm doing is if you can see this one, this one here is very square. So what I'm actually doing is taking it to a round shape like this one. So I'm going from square, square shape to round shape. <laughs> you forgot the the, Steph. It seems like we've only got two people watching, so is that you, Steph, on two different devices, or have we got another person uh, watching as well that's keeping silent and doesn't know what to say? Don't be afraid to ask questions. Okay, no worries, yep. Got to add some charcoal to the, to the uh, board because it's a little bit low on fuel. Okay, so that's actually to rest. I'll show you in a second when I've actually got something out of the forge. Because when, when you're swinging a hammer all the time, sometimes you need to stop stop and look at what you're doing, okay? So what, I, what that actually is, is what I'm hitting, it allows me just to not hit and I don't have to catch catch the weight of the hammer midair. So all I do is bounce it off the anvil in order so the momentum keeps going, right? It's conservation of energy. So the momentum keeps going, whilst I can look at what I'm doing and then the next next hits I can do on the on the piece and then I'll just bounce it off the anvil so I can see, so I can have a look at what I'm doing and maintain some momentum. Because look, if I if I just go like this, right, see how it bounces? See how it bounces back? Which means I'm not putting effort in having to lift that hammer back up. So when I go like that, I can bring, it, it, it's, it's that force goes into the anvil and bounces back. It's like a bouncy ball but made of metal. All right, so I bounce it back so I don't have to use all my effort in picking the hammer all the way back up. Just makes it a little bit easier to work. The purpose of the anvil is to give something to strike against. So the hammer and the anvil work together in squeezing out. You have ever had Play-Doh and you squeezed it between your hands or squeezed it between your fingers? Your fingers are the hammer and the anvil, so I'm squeezing it and shaping it into a different shape because I can't do it with my hands because it's too hot. I use a hammer and the anvil in order to squeeze it into the shape that I want it to be. So right now, this piece of metal is round, so I, but I want it to be square. So what I'm doing is using the hammer and the anvil to shape it into a square shape.
Okay, no more questions yet? Okay. I might just jump on the group and, uh, and make a post just to say I'm live now. Come have a look. Give me a second, uh, second to cool down as well. It's very hot here at the moment. Well, 10 people have seen it, so if they want to join in, they can, I guess. Just a second, just posting on the group. Um. job in the world everything that was once made of metal was made by blacksmiths everything from ships all the way down to knives and forks and they had a, a knife and fork maker had a special cut word a special um a special job name they were called cutlers that's where the word cutlery comes from okay then you had knife and sword makers or knife makers of course were cutlers as well but sword makers and spear makers and people who made armor armor they were called armorers, right? And then, of course, you had uh, people who made cups and then candles, candles um, holders and your shipbuilders and all different sorts. But everything that made with metal was worked by a blacksmith. So blacksmiths were everywhere once upon a time. Then the Industrial Revolution came. So what happened during the Industrial Revolution is a lot of stuff started being made by machinery. Now, of course, that machinery was made by blacksmiths, and then it was became um, repaired and maintained by blacksmiths. So blacksmiths actually ended up becoming mechanics and all different sorts of trades. Now, some blacksmiths still exist in the in the in the sense that um, people who put shoes on horses, so your horseshoes, have a special name as well. They're a special area of blacksmithing called farriers, and they, of course, they're they're almost. Uh, they're kind of like horse foot doctors as well as blacksmiths because sometimes they make their own horseshoes. So just like this, this is an old horseshoe, um, and they'd make these from scratch. I can't do that. I'm not that skilled. That's a different set of skills um, to what I do. But um, they still exist, of course. Uh, but, yeah, so they went on. So blacksmiths actually went on to do a whole heap of different jobs, and then because everything was made by machines, a lot of black the blacksmithing as a trade kind of died out. Now it doesn't it had didn't die out completely. There's still lots of blacksmiths all around the world, but um, it's not as big as it used to be. 
Muscular. Okay. So now I'm going to use a very special tool that we call a off cut or a hot cut because it cuts metal while it's hot. So this is our hot cut. Now this is a very sharp, well, very sharp piece of uh, metal that fits in. That is harder than the metal when it's because it's cold. It's harder than the metal that's hot. Now, because this is very hot, I don't want to touch this with my hands, which is why I use a pair of tongs. Just going to straighten this up a bit. Back in the fly because I've got a little bit more work to do with that. I'm going to go in there for the moment. Do the same one with this one. All right, so any more quick ah, okay. So Tilly wants to know how how I made the air pusher. Okay, so it's what we call a blower. Uh, blows air into the forge. Now, it's made by, it's got a fan inside it, okay? So it's, it's actually open on the back side. I've got the handle this side so that I can actually turn it. No, I don't have to reach over the top, right? But it's actually open and it's got a, a shape like this. As you can see, it's, it's round and then here is open as well. So what happens is that as the fan turns, it sucks air in it turns and then pushes it down down this hose into a pipe that's in there and into the fire, okay? So it's, it works like a fan. Now, if you've got a house fan and covered it in paper, okay, so um, just the front and the sides, you covered them in paper, okay, and, and left a hole about that big at the back, okay? Then you put a tube at the bottom, your home fan would do the same thing. What would happen, it would turn the air and push it out that hole. Now, because it's got a big area pushing down into a small area, it turns it into a, a blast type thing, a blower. And it will force that air to come out a little bit harder than if you just had the fan, okay? It's the same thing as if you stick your finger over the end of a hose and it gets really high pressure, that's kind of what you're doing to the air. It's, it's, it's turning it and put, making it a little bit higher pressure. Now, this is actually a modern type of blower. Originally, what they used was what's called a bellows. So a bellows is two pieces of timber. Originally, they were actually three because it had two different chambers, right? And what they would do was have a piece of leather and it was all airtight and they would push down and that would kind of, like you do, ever done it with a balloon where you blow up balloon and you push it and, and all the air comes out and it goes, right? That's kind of what the bellows would do, except it had a metal pipe at the end so it didn't go all funny. And they'd push and squeeze the air so it would do, it's doing the same thing as what this blower is and it would force the air by, by going up and down. You can also do the same thing with a bag, right? Or even 
with a bottle. You know, if you if you when you have an empty bottle and you squeeze it, right, and the air comes out really fast, or the water or whatnot, you squeeze it and it, and the air comes out. That's also a type of blower because all you're doing is forcing the air out really hard. Speaking of, I'm going to have a drink. It gets very hot in here because I'm working near a hot fire. And though I don't cut my fingers off, I'm going to take this out. So just to let you guys know, I was actually homeschooled too. So I know exactly how you're feeling. Ah, it's yes, very hot, yes. Put it this way, the normal temperature here is probably about 30 degrees. At the moment in the forge, it's probably about 40 to 50, 45 degrees. It's very hot. It's like working in a hot kitchen. This is why I've got to keep wiping my face and drinking lots of water so I don't get dehydrated and, and hurt myself. I am actually in the process of making a sword. This is a sword blade, or it will be. It's kind of roughly shaped at the moment. I've got a little bit more work to do, but I am in the process of making a sword. Eventually, it will look like a bit like this, Riley. So this will be a two-handed sword. This is what we call a practice sword or a fetish work. Okay, so eventually it will be, it will be a, a sword that I can use you know, and, um, but it's, it's in the process of being made. This was just made out of um, uh, what we call mild steel. So I'll go through that in just a minute just to tell you the different types of steel there is because mild steel isn't good for making um, swords and knives and stuff like that. It's only good for doing and building and, and making um, stuff like your hairpins and general stuff. But for, for stuff like swords and knives, you've got to use a special metal. And Miley just asked me a question. She says, I want to know how I got interested in this. I got interested in this because I, I like history. I find history very interesting. There's a lot of stuff that um, happened all the way through history that's all different sorts of things and lots of um, interesting people. And I got interested in this because blacksmithing was the basis for pretty much everything in the world, and it's how we became a modern society. If we didn't have blacksmithing, we'd still be literally in the Bronze Age, or worse, we've been in the Stone Age. So our modern way of life all came from a guy with a hammer and an ink ball and a forge. So that's how I got interested in it. And, of course, I wanted to make swords and knives too. That always helps. How do I protect myself from being burnt? Two very good ways. First of all, I presume that everything is hot, okay? Because in a in a in a smithy, right, everything can be very hot, okay. And even when it's black, it can be hot. And I'll show you that in just a minute, okay. But another thing is, I use tools like this to keep myself away from the hot things. 
So just like when you get something out of an oven, you use oven mitts. Or if you get something out of an, a microwave, you might use oven mitts or a tea towel or something like that to protect, protect your hands. Because these things get so much hotter, things burn very quickly. So I use a metal set of tongs, which are cool, in order to hold the hot things. Also, metal isn't a very good conductor. So the longer it is, it actually doesn't get that hot the further away. Now, if it's close to the heat, it will still get very hot. But as it gets further away, it cools down. So actually what I'll do is I'll show you how hot black steel can get. Just a second, I'm just getting that in the burn. So, as you can see, this has got a little bit of a red glow to it at the moment, but it's nearly black, okay? So I'm gonna show you how hot this is. So this is a piece of cardboard. It's losing the heat a little bit. See that smoking? So it doesn't look very hot there, but it's enough to burn through the cardboard just by holding it against it. So that's enough to burn me very badly, which is why I said I presume it's hot until I know it's cold. So unless I dink, dunk it in the quench tank, I think that this is gonna be hot. And that's how, what's one of the ways I prevent for myself from burning myself. The second is I stay far enough away. So if you notice, I don't stick my hands in the fire. I use tongs or something else to, to handle the stuff that's in there. Or if I wanna move the coals, I use my coal rake. And then, of course, when I manipulate the metal, I use the hammer and the anvil and the tongs. Does that answer your question there, Ray? So what I just did was I rolled it round into a circle at the top. And then what I'm going to do very shortly is I'm going to stick over here and give it a twist. So as you can see at the moment, it looks very square. And while it's at the moment, I can't twist it. It's too hard to twist. But it's, but it's when it's cold, it's very, very tough. Okay. But when it's hot, it gets a lot softer. So I'm going to heat this up so I can put a twist in it. Okay, so talking 
talking before about the different types of metal. Now, what I'm using now is what we call mild steel. Okay, so it's when it's being worked, it's very, very soft. And as you can see, I can bend it. Okay, I don't want to bend that too much because I I'm going to have to use this later. Right, when we make a knife, okay, we use what's called spring steel or high carbon steel. Okay, so it's got a lot more carbon than that does. So that will have about, yeah, between what we call uh, 0.6, point, uh, sorry, 0.2% carbon and 0.5% carbon. Okay, so 0 point, so 0 0.05. Okay, now a high carbon piece of steel will have anywhere between uh, 0 0.6 and 0 0.9 percent of carbon. So it doesn't sound like much, but it changes the quality quite a lot because you can't make car springs out of mild steel. A car leaf spring is made out of high carbon steel, so it gets that springiness once it's got the correct heat treatment to it. And that's what I made this knife out of. I actually made it out of a car leaf spring because it has the right amount of carbon in order to make something like swords and springs and knives and all different sorts of things to get made out of high carbon steel because it's tougher. It's harder to make, but it's tougher when it's actually when it's uh, treated properly within the forge and then quenched off and then and what we call hardened and tempered. So when you heat it up and you quench it either in oil or you quench it in water, it gets hard. And then we put it in an oven or put it over the fire uh, and bring it back to certain colors so that we know that some of that hardness has come out of it and it's made it a little bit softer, but it made, it's made it more springier and more tough, okay? So that's also where the saying, um, you know, keep your temper. It means, you know, make sure that you keep uh, your your wits about you, keep your, your mind in there, it's even tempered, okay? Because also, even tempered, if this was so, if, if it was softer here on this part of the blade than it was here, when I use this knife, it would bend here, so it wouldn't have an even temper. So I do make knives, I just haven't made swords yet. Have in the process of making one. What am I doing? That's what I was doing. Okay, I need to heat this up a bit more so I can twist it. Oh no, that didn't sound good. Oops. Little bit of malfunction here, guys, just a second. The blaze is just bent. That's all, just a second. Gotta figure out which one it is. Sorry about this, guys. Sometimes you just have to 
Right, so I'm just going to twist this now. Where's my pliers? There they are. So this is still hot. Cool it off. Now it's cool enough to touch. So there we go. It's got a nice twist in it. And that one's now fixed, finished. Do you have any more questions, guys? Don't be afraid to ask. I'm nice and friendly. And Miley, you might even remember me. Although I didn't have a beard back then, I'm a look, look a little bit different now. Okay, where did I just put them there? If I do this fast enough, I can get it straight without having to use a hammer. Oop, nearly burnt myself there. And this one's done now too. Yes, I am a little bit of a pirate. Arr. So this one's now done too. <laughs> I am a pirate there, Riley. Your mum knows a real pirate. So, and one of the things about blacksmithing is, is when we're making lots of stuff all at once, we try and make them very, very similar to each other. And they're always going to be a little bit different because they're all handmade. But as you can see, they all look pretty much the same. Three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Make one more. I'll make one more. One more, I say, one more. Uh, make it straight again. I've been before. Need to bend something very hard to make it straight again. <laughs> Need to make one more. Well, that's why I make them there, Tilly, because I sell them. This is uh, something I, I, I make and sell at markets and stuff like that. Well, it's the funny thing. Why is it hard to make straight again? Because when something's bent or broken, 
you've got it as more effort to get it back to where it was to begin with so it's pretty much straight now let's get closer All right as you can see at the tip it's a little bit bent from where i was working it before now i can try and straighten it out but it's never going to be perfectly straight like the other end ever again but i can try so let's get try let's go So now, if you look, let's get it. It's almost completely straight, but it's still got a little bit of a wobble to it. You can see it? Just a little bit of a wobble. And that's because I'm not a machine, right? But that's like, that's like if you hurt someone's feelings and say sorry. Sometimes, sorry almost fixes it, but it doesn't always fix everything. And that's why you've got to be kind as much as you can. Who would have thought you got a moral lesson out of wax anything? <laughs> Let's try and make one or more of these really, really fast. Let's well, talk some more about fire. Okay. So, there's a couple of different types of fire. We've got charcoal fire for a blacksmith. Then we've got coal fire. So, coal is different to charcoal. Charcoal is made from wood from trees. And we cook it and take all the bad, uh, not the bad stuff, but all the stuff that isn't carbon out of it. Whereas coal, coal comes directly out of the ground. It's mined. So it's, it's dinosaurs. It's all the old trees from the dinosaur times. And we burn that, and it's, it does the same thing as coal. Now, as you can see just there, I've also got a gas tank. Now, in, with that gas tank, what I actually use that for is I connect it to a, another different type of forge that we call a gas forge. So it burns the gas just like your oven does, but hotter, and it turns it into um, enough heat to do what I'm doing here. I actually made that knife that I showed you before. I made that in the gas forge. And again, it's the same type of thing. So the gas is fuel, we have heat, and we have air, and that creates the fire. So as long as you have those three things, You'll, you'll get fire, heat, air, and fuel. However, when we want to put a fire out, we take one of those ingredients out. So if we've got heat and fuel, but we don't have air, then we won't have fire. If we have 
uh, heat and air, but we don't have fuel, we'll have, um, then of course we'll have, we won't have fire. If we have um, fuel and air, we don't have heat, we won't have fire. So you need those three things in order to have fire at all times. As you notice, as you know, fire can be very dangerous. So that's the reason why I've got surrounded by a lot of empty space. So it can't catch anything else on fire. I've got to be very careful with fire because it can burn. And not just me, but can burn everything down. I don't mind talking about fire, I like fire. Why I do this? I'm going to ask you a question. So, Miley, when approximately did the did the Iron Age start? Okay, so that's your question. Tilly, what are the three things that a blacksmith uses most? Three things in this forge that a blacksmith uses most. And Riley, I want you to, I, I want to know what's your favourite thing about blacksmiths, okay? And I want you to, you to draw a picture for your mum of a forge and a fire and I want you to write your name at the top and your mum's going to show me later. <laughs> Miley, you're going to have to do some research, aren't you? Find out when the Iron Age started. Well done. Nearly right, Tilly. It's a fire. 
a hammer, and an anvil. Almost got it. Very, very well done. That's true. It was over a thousand years ago, Miley. Maybe that's a bit of homework for you. You can you can do a bit of research and find out when the iron when the uh, when the iron age started and tell your mum to let me know. This one came out a bit ugly. That's all right. And that should look quite bad, I reckon. I did ask him a question. Didn't you hear me? I asked you, Riley. I asked you, what's your favourite thing about blacksmithing so far? Right? And then I asked you to draw a picture of the forge for your mum and then write your name at the top. Okay? That's what, that's what I asked you to do. And I, I did ask you a question. your question and I gave you some homework. And one last one. See your favourite bits of fire, Riley. Okey dokey, that's fair enough. I like fire too. And there we go. Last one done. So it's time for me to have a have a drink. Have a little bit of a break. Okay, so the difference between glass and metal work is glass is actually made out of sand and you don't use a hammer, okay? So you use a lot of the similar tools, very similar tools, but you use, um, you use a glass anvil, which is used for rolling and, and shaping and you use a big long pipe to blow it in to turn it into bottle shapes and all different sorts, okay? And, um, and pliers to cut and all that type of thing. And it's also very, very hot, but it's made out of sand. Okay, but whereas about metalwork, it's made out of iron, which is a different a different element, different uh, a different uh, basic thing. Okay, and you use a hammer and an anvil to shape it. Okay, because when it's hot, it doesn't get quite as elastic or stretchy as 
as um, glass does. Glass gets very gooey and elastic. It's still very, very hot. It can still burn just like metal can, but it's a lot more stretchy, a lot more elastic, um, a lot more gooey. Like, uh, like um, if you think about it, looks glass is a lot like melted sugar. Okay, still very hot, still can burn you and cause a lot of damage, but it's a lot more like melted sugar, whereas um, metal is a different sort of sort of thing. That's the difference. Sorry, I'm very thirsty. Any more questions? If there's no more questions, we might we might call it an hour because it's been an hour and seven minutes. You guys have been very, very good, very attentive, and very asking a lot of good questions. Well done. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Miley. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Well, uh, you guys have a great day. Maybe you can write your mum a bit of a story um, and, and about what you've learned uh, in, today's, in today's video. Okay? So anyway, I'll let you go. You have a wonderful day. And I'll see you all next time. Bye. You're welcome, guys. <laughs>